Commander Johnson, Commander Roberti, Father David, Father David Ryan, Village Board members, Jeff Halen, Jim Bedoyne, Mark Lowe's, John Spraka, Steve O'Connor, Dan Stanovich, and Village Clerk Kathleen Johnson, Lake County Board member Craig Taylor, Lake Zurich Police Chief Steve Husak, Lake Zurich Fire Chief David Wheelock, Alan Lynch, our Medal of Honor guest speaker, assembled veterans, current military and residents and families of Lake Zurich, good morning and welcome to Lake Zurich and today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. I'm honored to be here with you this morning as we remember and honor our service members and the sacrifices that they and their families have made on behalf of duty, honor, and country. Memorial Day. I was struggling to put together some remarks for today that maybe hadn't been sent before in previous Memorial Day services. That turned out to be harder than I thought. I wanted something different prior to my official duties and the reading of the Village of Lake Zurich proclamation for today. Last year, I spoke of my childhood friend, Wayne Karn, who died too young in Vietnam. This year became a little bit more of a harder task for me. Remembering is not just about those who paid the ultimate price, but all those who served and the families who supported them. As such, it is also a day that we should remember and appreciate the contribution of family members who have served and the sacrifices made by those families. At this time of the year, we are frequently beset with emails and bumper stickers that insist, for example, that freedom isn't free. And for most of us in the audience, that slogan rings true with a resonant clarity that makes us stand a little straighter and walk a little taller this weekend. In a larger sense, I include all of you spouses, all of you sons and daughters, and brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles, and boyfriends and girlfriends who stayed steadfast in your commitment to your loved ones and who shared them with a country in need. I've long thought if the real story of war and survival need be told, audiences like this should hear from those loved ones who kept the light on for their loved ones, not knowing if or when that dreaded knock on the door might signal the worst. This day is set aside to honor and remember those who wore the uniforms and defended our freedom. It is also a day that not only glorifies those who have been lost, but those who are in action right now. Too few Americans can understand the sacrifice inherent in military service. The long separations from home and hearth and loved ones, the physical demands of dangerous duty in strange countries, the terror of killing to survive and sacrificing to save. I started to think about my own family's military service experiences. I hadn't thought much about that in the past. So please indulge me a few minutes while I recount my own family service reg legacy. My wife Jan's grandfather, Florian Lieb, served in the Army in World War I. Her father, Ralph Lieb, and his brothers, Del, Johnny, and Bob, all served at the same time in the Navy and during World War II. Think for a second the anguish that Jan's grandmother went through, having four sons in the military at the same time. Both my grandfathers served. My mother's father enlisted in the U.S. Navy in early 1918 and served as a seaman second class until 1922. My father was a captain, I'm sorry, my father's father was a captain in the Army Air Force during World War II. My father finished high school early and joined the Army as an enlisted man, wanting to fly, but he was colorblind and wasn't allowed, so he applied to OCS and served as an officer in post-bomb Japan. My sister Barb's husband and my brother uh, and my brother-in-law, Dan Bacalucci, he received an ROTC commission out of Canisius College in Buffalo, New York as an infantry officer. He completed infantry officer basic airborne ranger training and was assigned to the 5th Mechanized Infantry Division at Fort Carson, Colorado. He served as an infantry platoon leader from 1970 to 1971 with Company D, 1st Battalion, 52nd Infantry, 198th Infantry B B Brigade, 23rd Infantry Division, the Americal Division, based out of Chu Lai, Vietnam. Then he attended flight school uh, after commanding an, uh, an infantry company at Fort Polk, Louisiana, and flew helicopters for 23 years. Stationed overseas in Germany and Italy uh, between uh, tours in uh, Vietnam, three tours in Vietnam. He was awarded numerous badges and decorations, including the Combat Infantry Men's Badge, Silver Star, Bronze Star, Air Medal, Legion of Merit, Meritorious, Service Medal, Army Achievement Medal, and others. He retired after 26 years as a full bird colonel. 
I had a much more modest military career. I was drafted in 1966 after a year of college. I did my basic at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and I went to basic medical corpsman school in Fort Sam Houston, Texas, where I became a surgical tech. My kid brother, Kevin, enlisted in 1974 and served until 1978. He was then assigned to 14 months in Germany with the 856th Army Security Agency with direct support to the 3rd Armored Division. My nephew, Aaron Poynton, son of the aforementioned Kevin, served for seven years in the U.S. Army, enlisted in officer ranks. He served three years in U.S. Army Special Operations Command and four years in the Chemical Corps, attaining the rank of Captain. In 1960, 1996, he served alongside NATO troops in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I didn't realize how many of my immediate and extended family served. I'm proud that they did. So while veterans are joined in blood bond of brother and sisterhood, I would also like to embrace all the mothers and fathers, sisters and daughters, lovers and friends who stood strong for my family and for their soldiers while they answered a call that most couldn't hear. You too are part of that extended family of service. Those who have served and those who have loved, those who have served need no reminder about the cost of freedom, a cost paid in full by those we, who we stand with today and who no longer stand, but those who no longer stand but are living forever in our memory. There are far too many people in this country who do, who, who do need to remember that blood, the blood and sweat and tears of the few are the benefit of many. Our country has a proud military service. We all appreciated the support from our families at home. We know you have lived through difficult times and often taken the heavy load to keep the home fires burning. Thank you for what you've done. Your presence here today and that of the people gathering all across America is a tribute to those troops and to those families. But last, last but not least, we also want to remember the brave men and women of our police, fire, and rescue departments, our first responders who give their lives and gave their lives in the line of duty so that we could be here today. On behalf of all the families of the village of Lake Zurich, I wish to thank all of the veterans and their families here today, all the local veterans who could not attend today, and all our local sons and daughters presently serving in the military. I extend our sincerest gratitude and thanks for your sacrifices as you make our country a better place for all of us. Where once our mission was to serve, today our mission is remembrance. Our mission is still steeped in the, deep of the, the depth of the caring and concern and the compassion we once felt for each other. Thanks to all of you for remembering or for letting me be a part of the remembrance today. Our mission is to remember who we are, what we did, and most importantly, how much we loved each other. I remember. Thank you. Now to my official duties, I'd like uh, Rich Johnson, Commander of American Legion Post uh, 964, and um, uh, Tony Roberti, Commander, uh, Vice Commander of the VFW Post to, post to join me. I have a proclamation here from the village that will only take a couple minutes to read. Memorial Day Proclamation. Whereas Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, is a day of remembrance for those who died in our nation's service. And whereas Memorial Day was initially proclaimed on May 5, 1868 by General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, and whereas Memorial Day was first observed on May 30, 1868, when flowers were placed on the graves of Union and Confederate soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery, and whereas our ancestors and previous generations fought in war so that future generations would have freedom, and whereas they also helped shape the society that we know today, including our political, economic, military, and social systems, advancements in science and technology, and cultural traditions that enrich our American heritage. And whereas it is important on Memorial Day to reflect on the life memories of military personnel who fought and died for our country, to preserve the rights guaranteed under the U.S. Constitution, and to keep our nation strong, and whereas Memorial Day gives us the opportunity to renew our patriotism and to articulate our common desire to live in freedom and seek peace so that our nation's veterans will not have died in vain. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Mayor Tom Poynton, do hereby recognize May 26, 2014 as Memorial Day in the village of Lake Zurich, and I urge all citizens to honor those who have died in the service of the United States of America. Copy for each one of you. 